In the last video, we ended up here with the time-independent uh, Schrodinger equation, uh, which is uh, what I want to talk a little about a little bit more about in this video. Uh, as we know, as you saw in the previous video, the time-independent Schrodinger equation uh, is defined by um, this operator, which is called the Hamiltonian, which operates on the wave function uh, to get to give you the energy. So the, the basic way the Schrodinger equation works is that you define your operator, and that depends on what the system is, as I'll show you. Uh, it determines, it's determined by the kinetic energy of the particle that you're interested in, and the potential energy. Uh, and then solving the Schrodinger equation basically involves finding a function here, so that when you operate on this function with the operator, you get your function back times a constant. And that constant is the energy of your system. So depending, so different systems uh, will have the same kinetic energy operator, but they'll differ in what the potential energy operator is. Uh, so for example, if you set V uh, equal to Coulomb's law, so this would be the attraction between two oppositely charged particles, which is just one over r in, in certain units, then you get the hydrogen atom. So this is the attraction of the electron uh, to the nucleus, uh, and you treat the electron as this wave particle. Uh, so that's the Schrodinger equation. The Schrodinger equation for the hydrogen atom would be this kinetic energy operator minus one over r, where r is the distance between the electron and the proton. You can also set V equal to uh, a square well potential. I'll show you what this means. But basically, you have a particle in, in this case, a, a box, a one-dimensional box of length L. So there's no potential on the particle if it's inside the box. But when it hits the side of the box, then the potential is equal to some constant. And I'll show you an example of this. If you set V to this function here, which is basically the energy of a spring with a force constant k, uh, then you get the harmonic oscillator. Uh, and so this is used, for example, in vibrational spectroscopy if you imagine that x is a bond length. Um, and then that gives you the vibrational uh, spectrum of this harmonic oscillator. Or finally, uh, you can set v equal to zero, and then you can write, if you assume that your molecule is rigid, uh, then you can write the kinetic energy operator like this. Uh, and this is the basis of rotational spectroscopy. So, but the first main lesson here is that the Schrod different Schrodinger equations for different systems are different because, whoops, because V is different. Uh, and so, depending on how you define V, you get a solution for different systems. The other uh, lesson here, uh, which you should notice is that I have an n here. So this n basically means that there is not just one solution to the Schrodinger equation. There's very often, or there's always many solutions to the Schrodinger equation uh, with different energies. Okay. So an example uh, here for the hydrogen atom, which you're probably familiar with, right? Is, so this is the Schrodinger equation for the hydrogen atom. Uh, this is the equation for the different energies um, here. Uh, so you can see that, uh, for example, the lowest energy solution is when n is equal to 1, uh, and then this um, energy then gets higher and higher uh, as n increases. Uh, so the corresponding wave function that matches uh, each energy is then given here. So these are the this is, these are the mathematical functions that give you a constant back when you operate on this. So this is the wave function for the lowest energy solution, and you'll recognize this as the 1s orbital. The next lowest solution is the 2s orbital, uh, and then the 2p orbital, which turns out to have this, the same energy uh, as the 2s orbital for the hydrogen atom. And so you can see uh, the plot here for the 1s and the 2s. Sorry, this is the 1s, and this is the 2s. Um, 
So the question is now, what is this? This is the functional form, but what does this wave function actually mean uh, in physical terms? Uh, and so the interpretation of the wave function is that if you square it uh, and then multiply it by a, a small value, then you get the probability of finding your particle in this small interval, dx. Uh, so this is the probability of finding the electron. So for example, dx could be a little piece here, uh, and then the probability of finding the electron uh, in the 1s orbital in this particular spot would then, you get that by squaring the wave function, which is here, and then multiplying it. So the wave function squared itself is the probability density, right? Because it is the probability per some volume or per some length. Uh, and this is also known as the amplitude. Okay, but the main take-home message here is that uh, the probability, uh, the wave function is related to the probability of finding the particle in a certain space.